Greetings. Praise the Lord. And it's really hard to believe that today is already September the 2nd. Wow, where does time go when you're having fun, eh? Well, praise the Lord for his word. That we can get into his word and let his word get into us. Amen. And we're glad that you've joined us today for another Discipleship Empowerment Word. My name is Dr. James Paul Humphreys, and we're glad to visit with you around the world. And thank you for praying and keeping us in prayer. And may God continue to use the things that we're talking about to be able to enrich you, encourage you, to build you in your faith. You know, we've said many times before, it, a lot of times uh, the Bible is full of words, little words, big words, complicated words, theological words. But when you put them all together like a puzzle, all of a sudden they make something. Or if you don't like the puzzle analogy, you could say, well, we could go and put things together like little pieces, like when it comes to building a car or a model or some other type of thing where you have a lot of pieces, but they need to be put together to make a sense or to make a picture. And so that's what we're doing as we talk about this whole area of holy Holy Spirit and Spirit. And today we got a couple times more when this word is used. And again, I emphasize, emphasize for two months now that the word holy is being separated, set apart, and the idea of anointed for a purpose. And the Spirit is the breath of God. So when we see the word Holy Spirit, we can see that the Holy Spirit who has come who is set apart by the Father, by the Son, to minister to us, to breathe upon us life. Amen. Isn't that exciting? And so we're glad that you're with us today. And we're in chapter 3 of First Chronicles. Not First Chronicles. First Corinthians. <laughs> Sometimes we're in so many places in the Bible, i got to remember where we are. But in First Corinthians chapter 3, we get the word Holy Spirit or spirit, I should say, and the word holy, uh, both used in chapter 3. And we're not going to uh, probably move too far from chapter 3 today, because I think it's important to realize that as yesterday, we were building on this whole idea of the importance of wisdom, and how God wants to give to mankind not carnal wisdom or worldly wisdom. He wants to give us spiritual wisdom, which comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. And we need a lot of wisdom. And he's going to continue on that thought as we move into chapter 3, because he will talk about carnality and all the other problems, and they will talk about the arguments that were going on in that day and age. Can you imagine the church have arguments? That's hard to believe, eh? <laughs> But they were having an argument over Paul and Apollos. Which one was more smarter? Which one was giving the gospel more clear? And some people will go around and say, well, I was a follower of Apollos. And other people said, yeah, but I follow Paul. And other people would say, yeah, but I've got one better than you. I follow Peter and James and John. You know, they're the true ones. Well, it's, doesn't that sound a little bit a lot like today <laughs> where we get people that are just saying who we are following and who we are after and all those kinds of things. And in reality, what we need to be is followers of Jesus Christ, followers of his wisdom, followers of who he is, right? And how God uses other people to give us a bigger picture of who our Lord Jesus Christ is as our God and as our creator. So that's why we need to become what is Christians, which means Christ-like or a follower of Christ. So they were discussing this, and you'll see in chapter 3, it gets discussed, uh, you know, where Paul is talking about how he is ministered in verse 3, I should say in verse 5, and then he talks about in 6, where he says, I planted, a Paul watered, but God gives the increase. And again, over in uh, verse 22, he says, Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world, uh, the world or life or death, you know, he goes on and says, This is not really where it's all at, where it's at. And we can't seem to get this across is a walking a life in Jesus Christ, the one 
who was there to create us, you know, who was there to minister and die for us and and now to give us a resurrection life. And we need to get a hold of that wisdom. Amen. So as we go and look at, we're going to start at verse 9 here. Because if we were to give a, a little bit of a title today, you know, each day I, I try to think a word detached to the word holy. And uh, I, as I say, I've seen this word holy in a whole new way that I've never really paid a lot of attention to before. And so today, uh, when I attach another word to it, it's going to be a holy building. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we're going to see how Paul talks about how we are created and built for our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only how we are created and built, but how we are temples of the Holy Spirit who wants to dwell within us and bring forth his wisdom and knowledge and understanding in our lives. So as we go up to verse 9, notice what it says. For Paul says to them, for we are God fellow workmen or workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. And so here Paul is beginning to give an illustration that how God is building us. And as a, a building, we are also workers working in assembling together. You know, the, the key part is that we, we uh, uh, are not only working on what God is building in us, but what God is building us together. That's why it's so important that somehow we figured out a way to get together because we are a building together for God's glory, but we're also a building for God's glory individually. And so that's why it's been a real lifeline to get together with you guys every day around the world because it's a lifeline as we communicate and message each other. It helps build up each other. So he says here, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. It goes on in verse 10. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it, but let each one take heed how he builds on it. And so Paul is saying, I've come along and, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, I've laid a foundation in the Corinthian church. Paul was a foundation builder. Uh, there was many years people asked me, what was some of my ministry? I would say, I'm a foundation inspector. I like to go back and look at the way things were set up, the way things were built, and see if there's cracks in the foundation, see if there's a movement in the foundation. Or maybe even I've seen where the foundation was here, okay, right in front of me, but some along, someone came along and built the building over there, not even on the foundation. And I've seen that so much in people's lives. I've seen it in churches. I've seen it around the world where God had given a prophetic word or God had said something to the people and said, build here build this, and uh, they go over and build that. And in reality, we need to have the wisdom to know where to build. We need to have a site plan. We need to hear from God. And Paul says, you know, that he was going to build. And what he builds on, of course, as we know, Jesus is the rock of our foundation. And then Paul says, I'm going to build upon that. And then other people come along and build upon that. And that's what we're to be building on. We're to be building on Jesus Christ. That's the first, that's the foundation a rock. And then the next thing, we're to take his word as blueprints and use it and how we can take our lives in the power of Jesus Christ, how the Lord takes our life and uses to build something for his glory. So Paul says, you know, I'm a master builder. And, uh, you know, he was able to bring the word. And I, I, as I said, sometimes people didn't like me because I could sometimes say I was a master inspector. <laughs> and people would say to me sometimes, well, who made you God today? Well, you know, no one made me God at all. I'm just a servant of the Lord. And I love the word of God. And I love to see things that are built according to the word of God, not according to the flesh, not according to man's wisdom, but according to the word of God. 
And there is a lot of building going on right now where, as I say, the foundation is here and the building of the structure is way over there. <laughs> and we need to bring all that back together that we're building upon the word and the rock of the Lord. And it's interesting how often this word build gets used. At least we can see it five times in this little section of scripture. For he goes on, verse 11, For no one, no other foundation can one lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus, or Jesus Christ. So that's why we need to be foundation inspectors. Because the world is constantly trying to give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding and saying, build here, build here. This is the best way. Now, those of us who are older, and there's some that are watching today, we can tell you, some of the you younger ones, how things have changed over the years. But if you get a chance to live long enough, it's interesting how years and years ago, they would tell you to do it this way. And then years would go on and they would say, no, that wasn't the right way. You should do it this way. And then years go on. And then finally, now in the years that we are, they're saying, no, you should build this way. Not realizing what they're saying is exactly what we were doing 30 to 40 years ago. But now it's a new revelation about how it should be done today. <laughs> Thinking... I sometimes tell some of my friends, you know, we talked about that in the in the 60s and 70s and now and it was discarded as no good and now it's back again. So some of you who are older know what I'm talking about. He says that the foundation needs to be built on Christ. I'm not telling you anything new, you know, but so often now so many ministries and that are built on people, on various people. You know, you, you watch every program, Christian program uh, that comes on, uh, it's very key, you know, that it's people's names, not people, you know, what they're doing or what they're trying to do, but a lot of times it's people's names. And that's just the way society has worked now. Even with YouTube, if you want to find out what I'm teaching about, just type in my name. Or if you want to find out anything about me, just type in my name. <laughs> But Paul is saying that what we're building or what we're laying is should be laid on the foundation of Jesus Christ. That's why I'm praying and I'm encouraging people today that we go back and be foundation inspectors. Inspect that how are, are our lives building on something different than what they originally started off. That's why when I hear people say, does God still do that? Does God still fill people? Does God still anoint people? Does God still heal people? Does God still t speak to people? And the answer is yes, 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 and yes. And because they'll say, well, we don't, we've been told that it's not like that anymore. There is a new way, a new life, a new direction, you know, and that is not true. There is nothing new under heaven. The And the, what we need to trust in is the foundation of Jesus Christ. Well, let's go on. And get me preaching here again on this word. Verse 12. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become clear for the day. And the word day is capitalized. That end day. A lot of people are talking about end times. But here it uses the word day. For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. So Paul's saying there's a day coming. And the day that's coming that what however you built, you know, I mean, people build their house with straw. People build over in Myanmar, they build their houses with bamboo and, and then cement and bricks and rocks and mud and all kinds of things. I don't think I've seen too many houses built with, with, uh, uh, gold and silver, but there will be gold and silver sometimes in them. But Paul is saying, however you built, you better realize there's something that's going to take place in that day. And in that day, what is going to take place is that there will be fire that will come upon whatever structure, whatever you have built on Jesus Christ. And again, that fire will eat up and will sometimes even destroy 
all what's there. And the purpose of it is because God wants what is pure, what is righteous, what is holy, what is going to bring honor and glory to him. And it's interesting, one of the names for the Holy Spirit is fire. Remember even in Acts when it talked about the cloven tongues of fire that came and rested upon their heads? That must have been an amazing sight <laughs> to see cloven tongues of fire on their head. But fire is a purging, cleaning process that gets rid of the droth. It, get rid of, it gets rid of the impurities. And so what Paul was saying that during that day, that day will declare what we built, whether it's real or not real whether it's true or not true, whether it brings honor to God or not. And each one, each one who built will be tested of what sort of thing that he built. And the interesting thing is, if I said, wow, that's really, the, uh, you know, uh, going to be hard and, and it's going to be difficult to go through, but he's going to go on and tell us, but this is how you need to build. This is what you need to understand. If you got to the place that you understand that Jesus Christ is the way, truth, and the life, that he is the rock of our salvation, you understand of that. The process that takes place after that of sanctification, where the Holy Spirit wants to use us as a building material for his glory, to build something, and he's going to tell us what it is. So he goes on verse 14, If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. So if anyone's work, that which he established, if he, if he has done it under the Lord and it goes through the fire and comes out the other side that brings glory to God, he will receive a reward. There's an interesting thought, isn't it? Because Jesus talked about when he comes back again, He what does he say? He brings his rewards with him. Wow. You know, we're not, we're, yes, we're servants, but we also want to realize that our, our Lord and our King wants to bless the faithfulness of his children. He's not only going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, which is going to be a real blessing in itself, but he's also wanting to be as a loving father to reward and bless those who have walked with him and have built their lives on Jesus Christ. So he brings his reward. But there's a condition here. Verse 15. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, and yet as through fire. So here's an interesting thought. Is that when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know, you have salvation in him, and then after that you begin to build. You build your life on Christ. And the, the picture here is, is that sometimes we will go get building materials and things that shouldn't be built into our life. And when the Lord Jesus Christ comes and the fire comes, those things will be burnt away. You will still go into glory, but you will miss out on the blessings that you could have had because you used wrong building material. Is what Paul is trying to say here. Your salvation is secure you're going to be with the Lord, but that which you have sown or planted or built or whatever will undergo judgment, will undergo the fire of God, and that which was remains, you would be rewarded. But some, because they have built the particular way that they built, they'll lose all. Because they built more with the things of the world than the things of Christ. But then he goes on. And he gives us two verses that deal with this whole idea of the Spirit of God and the holiness of God. So we're building, building, building. He's trying to tell us. Remember, he started off. Some said, I'm building on Paul, and some said, I'm building on Apollos. Paul says, you know, get over it, people. We're not building on each other. We're building on Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then he goes on and talks about the way we're building. How are we building? Is it building with wisdom or with the world carnality? How are we building? Then he gets into our two key verses for today, verses 16 and 17, where he says, do you not know? And here is the question. 
for so many people, so many disciples, so many churches. Do you not know, Paul was saying? Do you not understand? Do you not get what I'm trying to say to you? Do you not know that you are the temple of God? Do you not know that what God is building in you is a temple that will be filled with his glory, filled with his power? Because look what it goes on. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? And it's a question mark. Do you not know? And I think if we would answer, yes, Lord, I do know, then we would change our whole day the way we live each day. And I know I need to get this too. I need to get it from up here to down here. Do you not know? Whatever you do from every waking moment of the day, do you not know that you're a temple of the Spirit of God? And the answer is often, no, we don't know. Or we don't realize. Or we forget. But how would a day be different when we go out today? Those of us who are starting our day early now, and those of you who have finished your day, so you'll have to wait till tomorrow, maybe. But do you not know that when you walk out of the door, whether there's sickness all around you, whether there's destruction and floods and famines all around you, or whether there's wars or rumors of war or calamities or earthquakes or whatever, do you not know that you are? a temple of God where the presence of his spirit is in you? Wow, how that would change our thinking throughout the day. That would be something that I should be thinking a lot more often. Do you not know that today is the day that the Lord hath remade and we will be glad and rejoice in it? Why can you be glad and rejoice? Because you're a temple of God. You've invited Jesus Christ into your heart. You've allowed, died to yourself, and now you're being built on a sure foundation of Christ. And what he is building is a temple that will be filled and is filled with the power and anointing of his Holy Spirit. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what the, what the world may put upon you, no matter the weaknesses of your flesh that may be bombarding you, you're still a temple of God. Do you not know? Do you not know? Do you not get it? Do we not get it? Do we not understand it? That's why I think the enemy wants to get churches and people away from talking about the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. He wants us to get away from that we wouldn't be fanatical when it comes to the things of God, to the gospel. Oh, be careful how you talk. Be careful how you speak. Be careful what you call sin. Be careful, you know, how you interact with people because they may look down on you or they may persecute you or they may do all kinds of things. But the reality is your life, if you've given it to Christ, is that you're built upon a rock and that you're a temple for his glory. Hallelujah. Doesn't that want to make you shout? Thank God. Thank God that we're a temple. So don't we know that? Can we somehow, you know, not get it into our minds that like the glory of our gardens, you know, there's beautiful flowers out there now. There's beautiful things all around. Like the glory that God has built his creation. He's even built you even in a greater way. And that he takes himself, his spirit, and puts it within you? Do you not know? And sometimes we forget. What an amazing thought to get up today and say, hey, I'm a temple of God, filled with his Holy Spirit. And no matter what the enemy throws at me, no matter what the enemy tries to do, I stand firm. No matter what the winds and the waves, that's why Jesus said, make sure your foundation is not on sand, but it's built upon a rock. Why? Because that rock is where we're going to build the temple of God. That was going to bring glory. Not only glory to him as individuals, but glory to him as a body. 
So that's why when he asks, so do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? That's the question. But then Paul goes along and answers it in verse 17. Because he, he's saying, hey, Corinthian church, hey, church, do you not know that you're a temple of God, church? Disciples, don't you know that you're a temple of God? He's saying it to a church. Why? Because they were building their own temples. They were living in their own wisdom. They were building on other foundations, you know. I, I've gone to places around the world that, that people uh, join together many religions. Many religions. You know, they steal from each other ideas. If you look at Buddhism, you think you would you saw uh, certain churches that are in the world. Or if you look at churches, you would think that they got a Buddhism in them. Or the New Age movement. You would say, well, that's impossible. No, 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 no. They're taking things from all different, and they're trying to build it. And Paul says, watch out, watch out, because our true foundation is Jesus Christ in him only. And we need to build upon him. And we need to go back and look at the foundation. You know, every morning when we do these discipleship teaching things, uh, you know, a lot of times I thought about stopping. And I probably will adjust things down the road in October. But, you know, I thank God, first of all, that they're being recorded. Because sometimes I need to listen to them myself. Not sometimes. Pretty well every day. You know, we go down afterwards, Coleman and I, and we have breakfast, and then we talk about the messages, what the Holy Spirit has been saying to us. And then we pray about it and say, Lord, help us this day to get it into our heads, to get it into our hearts, that we're a temple of God. That's what today, when we walk around today and work together today, I hope that we have in the back of our minds, do you not know? And that's what Paul wanted them to know because he goes on in verse 17, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. Woo! <laughs> Paul brings out the heavy artillery now. If you're building something that is not of God, is not a right, it will be destroyed. And you say, well, what is that? That's that wood, hay, stubble, gold, silver, all those things that he talked about. How will it be destroyed? By fire. If you don't know anything about what fire can do, just go out in British Columbia right now and you can see what fire can do. And it does it so quickly. You know, I've been watching the news of different places where people said that they could hardly even get their clothes and get into the car and had to drive out. I remember my friends in Fort McMurray when the city caught on fire and all they had time to do was to get in to their cars and try to get out and the cars were lined up for miles. People trying to get out and when they came back a little later, all there was was piles of ashes all over the place. Oh, fire is destructive. The Holy Spirit can be used and is used and is part of our lives to build us up. But if we build wrong, it, the Holy Spirit's fire and power can also destroy and burn up. And so he says, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him for the temple of God is, for the temple of God is, and here's our word we've been studying for the last 60 days, for the temple of God is holy. How does he, how to gain does this word holy fit? Because the word means, holy means to be set aside, set apart, anointed for a purpose or as a vessel for God. God wants us to be holy temples above and beyond. He doesn't want any impurities in that. And again, that's a problem when I see what's going on in churches today. Wow, as a temple of God, they are crossing the line over more and more into things that are not of God. You know, it's okay if we do a little bit of this. It's okay if we do a little bit of that. It's okay if we, if we go and, and, and we do a few little things. It's not okay. Why? Because you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are a holy temple. 
You've been a temple that's been set aside, set apart for the Lord. And that temple is a temple that is to bring glory to God. That's what God wants to do. That's what God is saying. That God is holy. So isn't it interesting, the question that he ends up with here as he comes along, so which temple are you? <laughs> he's saying this to the church. He's preaching at them. He says, you know, watch how you're building this thing. Watch how this temple, this temple is for the Holy Spirit and the power of God in you. But if you're using other building materials, things of the world, they're going to be consumed. They're going to be destroyed. And then Paul ends up with this final question. So I just got a question. He says to you, church. And here's the question today before we pray. Here's the question. Which temple are we? I didn't ask it. He asked it. Which temple are we? And I'm asking me that question today too. Lord, you've created me. You've empowered me. You've anointed me. Lord, I need to go down and check the foundation daily to make sure that what I'm building is being built upon you. And Lord, that I'm using your building material and not the building material of this world. So when that day comes and the fire of God comes down upon my life, those things that were not of you will be burned up. But Lord, what you want more is to be able to bring your reward to us and bless us because we built upon you. So like Paul asked you, ask us. Ask me, O oh Lord, what temple am I? Whose temple am I? Lord, I pray. Oh, I pray today that we will be temples of Jesus Christ, built on a sure foundation, built and filled with the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you receive that today? I'm saying that to us, not just to you, but even to me. Today's a good day to be a foundation inspector. Today's a good day to go back and see if our lives line up with the blueprints of the architect of Jesus Christ and his word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the things that your word shows us. And Lord, thank you that you want us to be vessels of your spirit. And Lord, not only vessels of your spirit, but Lord, as a vessel that we're to be a holy temple, set aside, set apart for your glory, anointed for you. And so, Lord, I pray today that you would help us to be foundation inspectors, building inspectors. Lord, that we would look at and look into the mirror and look at our lives and say, Oh, God, oh, God, the mirror of your word is showing this. The mirror of your word is showing that. Help us, O oh Lord, to have your power, your anointing to build here during this time, Lord, so that we can be prepared and ready so that when you come, Lord, that we can be a blessing for you. So we thank you now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I don't know about you, but that kind of shook me up this morning too. And I need to spend some more time today going back around and looking at the building and going back and inspecting the foundation. And I know when we do that, you know when you do that, what, what is the fruit of that? When you make sure that everything is okay, when you make sure that the foundation hasn't shifted or the walls haven't crumbled or the rain is not pouring in through the roof, you know what you, you, know what you feel after doing that? You feel a lot of peace. I've been going around just lately because we're getting ready for fall. I haven't been around for a lot of years. You know what I've been doing? Walking around our house a number of times. Trying to figure, okay, I got to get that fixed. Got to get that done. Got to so we can get our, our house, our physical house will be ready for the winter and the cold. But I believe that God is also showing us that our spiritual houses need to be ready for that day. Amen. We love you. Keep on keeping on. And Lord willing, we're going to keep building and we're going to keep looking at the word holy, Holy Spirit and spirit. And see how God will use his word to speak into our life today. 
Amen. So we love you, Lord willing. We hope to see you again tomorrow. Amen. Bye-bye.